What's good, Commanders fans? So it's been a while. It's been about a week since I posted a video. So um, not a lot has really gone on, but OTAs, week two OTAs, day two yesterday. A lot of content creators, a lot of YouTubers were out there yesterday. Um, some people were tweeting. Uh, so shout out to y'all who were out there. But some people were tweeting live the updates from the practice. And then the commanders told them to delete their tweets. So I was looking at it. I was like, oh, man, I should have screenshot to see what's going on. But basically what I got from yesterday was Jahan Dotson has looked really good. And I don't want to get hyped up over OTAs. You know, last year, De'Ami Brown was cooking guys left and right. I still think De'Ami's going to be a good wide receiver, but I don't want to get too hyped. I'm just hearing Jahan Dotson is looking really, really good. He's flying past people. Him and Carson Wentz have a really, they have really, really good chemistry already. I'm, I'm just, I'm getting, I'm not, I don't want to get too hyped or too excited, but I think Jahan Dotson is going to be a, a good, I'm not going to say the real deal, but I, I, I got a good feeling about him. Like I said, I, I got to see him at Penn State, watch him a couple of times. Man, I, I think I think he's going to be a good player, man. I think he's going to be a, an excellent compliment to Terry McLaurin. Of course, Terry McLaurin was not there today. Chase Young was there. So all the people who were speculating and whatnot and trying to make a big story of him not being there, he is there. He was in Colorado doing rehab last week. That was the reason why he was not there. And he said that was agreed upon with the um, commander staff as well. Montez Sweat was there. Montez Sweat was there yesterday as well. Chase Young was there yesterday. Um, Deron Payne. We know the story that Ben Stanek put out there that Deron Payne was upset with his contract. I have met, I have not made a video since he made that tweet where he said um, something. Uh, I don't know who who he called a goofy, but he, he basically is in the tweet he said there's no problems at all. Basically saying what Ben Stanek said about him leaving the field because of the contract was not true or 100 percent true that, that he did not storm off the field. So he has been working off working out on the side field during team drills. Um, JP Finlay said that he's been running hills. Um, when they do team drills. So that's that's the story with that. So we'll see what happens with Deron Payne, what happens with that. Uh, but Montez Sweat being back, that's good news. Chase Young being there, that's good news. Um, talked about his rehab. I don't want him to say I'm all in for week one. So I like some of the things that he said. I will get to some of the quotes um, later that Chase Young said, but I don't want him to do the RG3. I'm, I'm, I'm coming back week one. I'm all in for week one. I don't want him to rush back and do that. Take your time, rehab, get back. when you, if, it's, if you get back in October, it is what it is, you know. I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, but yeah, let's let's get to the plays here. Let's get to who was on the side field, who was not. Um, let me see if I can pull that up. But yeah, we'll, we'll start off with some plays here. I know uh, Chase Rui, of course, of course, on the sideline as was on the sideline. But um, this is from Nikki Javala. She said the Commanders tomorrow. This, this is the post June first cuts. You know, Terry Moore not being there. This uh, does have an impact on the Commanders' cap space and roster. The Commanders will have another 11.88 million dollars in salary cap space to work with from the release of Landon Collins. So we'll see if that does impact Terry McLaurin. We'll see if that, if that speeds up a deal getting done. So the side field crew for Ben Sandick was Logan Thomas being out with that ACL injury. Hopefully he can be back by week one. Sammy Reyes out with an injury. Chase Ruye and Tyler Larson. Um, Chase Young was in the facility, but he was rehabbing inside. And then he came out later on and started cheering his teammates on in practice. So um, this is... From Zach Selby, he's a beat reporter. He said, Went, Carson Wentz just zipped the pass to Jahan Dotson, who snagged it for a touchdown, a preview of what will hopefully be many, many scores this fall. On the first play of team drills, Montez Sweat beat his man and got in Wentz's face before the quarterback dumped it off to Hodges, the uh, tall tight end from Arizona State. Nice to see the defensive end back in action. So Montez Sweat already wreaking havoc, um, getting back there and, and pass rush. We were expecting a big year for Montez Sweat. I mean, he didn't have a bad year last year, but what, he had like four or five sacks, then he had the jaw injury. Then he had, um, you know, a family, unfortunate family, um, you know, one of, one of his family members got murdered. Um, so he just had a lot of things going on, you know, last year. So I thought he started to hit his stride coming in. Then he had the injury and then, you know, the whole thing happened with that. So um, hope, hope for a bounce back here for him and, and, um, and Chase Young for sure. But Carson Wentz, I've heard he's been looking solid in practice. That's good. Um, Matthew Parrish reported bringing back the threads I used to do for training camp 11 on 11 is now Ben St. Juice is in the slot which is new played ahead of Danny Johnson on the first new snap so um, Kendall Fuller is better outside William Jackson is of course going to be our outside uh, corner Ben St. Juice in the slot Ben St. Juice is versatile offers position flex can play outside and can play in the slot so we got to get him on the field Danny Johnson is another is another slot corner that we have we don't have a lot of depth at that position so you know if they do want to sign somebody that's left in free agency there's not a lot of guys out there but they want to bring somebody else in for that slot corner position. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens there. Um, 
So Deron Payne has continued this for Matt Paris. Deron Payne continues to set out team drills. The coaches continue to move guys around. Jamin Davis, for instance, played with both the first and second units. Now, J.P. Finley also said that um, Jamin Davis played for five or six snaps, then he sat down. Then it was Cole Holcomb and David Mayo for a lot of the series there. So we know Ron Rivera likes David Mayo a lot. He's good at calling plays. He's like another coach out there. So they do like David Mayo a lot. So expect to see David Mayo getting some playing time again this year. I don't know if they're going to bring back John Bostic, but they haven't really signed any linebackers. And J.P. Finley said that there was a lot of two linebacker sets out there. That's a big reason why they haven't really been aggressive in signing a linebacker or didn't draft a linebacker. They want to have that Buffalo nickel and have two linebackers out there. Most likely it's going to be uh, Cole and Jamin and then Cole and David Mayo. That's what it's looking like right now. We still got a long way to go, but that's what it's looking like right now at the moment. So, um, Zach Selby also says Jahan Doss is getting a lot of action today and making some really nice plays. Like I said, I'm not trying to get too hyped, but Jahan Doss, every reporter, every B reporter, everybody who's been at practice said he's just like another Terry McLaurin with, you know, the way he carries himself. Great route runner, speed guy. That, you know, Ron compares him to Deshaun Jackson and Steve Smith and all kinds of guys like that. And Jahan Doss plays bigger than his size. The catch radius, the bounce. Um, I think he's going to be a good player, man. I really think he's going to be a good comment. And then J.P. Finley also said Curtis Samuel has been getting a lot of work and practice, too. So that's encouraging, too. That's an encouraging sign to see that he's healthy and out there playing and not on the side field. Um, Zach Selby says, Kendall Foley gets the first pick of the day, and as, it, at, and as is tradition, the entire defense spurs down the field to celebrate. So Kendall Foley, he played a lot better in the second half of the year. The whole secondary played a lot better in the second half of the year. We know Jack Del Rio blamed the secondary being so bad last year because the OTAs guys weren't there. So everybody's there that we know. Bobby McCain is there. William Jackson is there. Ben St. Juice is there. The whole secondary, Cameron Curl has been, you know, Ron Rivera saying that Cam Curl is a leader now, a local leader, a captain of this roster. So we'll see if he gets a C on his chest. But, you know, since Jack Dory is blaming it on OTAs, which I don't agree with at all, it's good to hear that. So, um, and then uh, P. Haley says, Chase Young has made his way onto the field. And then Zach Selby says, Chase Young has made his way onto the field. No brace immediately shouts, let's go Tez to Montez Sweat. To Montez Sweat as 11 on 11s begin. Uh, this is from Serge the Shooter. He's a cameraman. I uh, found him on Twitter. Uh, he says, Kendall Fuller jumped a slant route and the defense went crazy. LOL, they run it back some route, the same route and Wentz connects with Curtis Samuel on the next play. Um, and then uh, Serge the Shooter says, 40-yard laser throw from Wentz to Dotson. Touchdown in between two defenders. Um, Serge the Shooter also says, Antonio Gibson just made a cut and straight up the middle vision was on point. So AG, he's working on his vision, man. You got Brian Robinson behind you, or they're going to have that dynamic duo. You know, Ron Rivera compares them to Jonathan Stewart and D'Angelo Williams when he had at Carolina. He, you know, he always compares the players he has now to guys that he had in Carolina. We are the commanders, so that's what he's looking for, that one-two punch. Um, Zach Selby also says, William Jackson nearly had an interception after a pass that De'Ami Brown was batted in the air, but De'Ami, De'Ami uh, made the extra effort to knock the ball away. Um, this is from Ethan Caddow. He says, Wentz has continued to look Dodson's way during 11s too. Nice little connection form between 11 and 1. So we got to get Terry out there. We got to get him paid, man. So these guys can get on the same page. No, it's early in OTAs, but I would like to see, you know, Curtis and uh, Terry and Jahan on the field so they can get that chemistry together already. Um, Serge Schroeder also talks about Drew White, the linebacker, the, und the undrafted linebacker out of Notre Dame. He gave him some props. He said, Drew White just got the gap, just shot the gap and got to Sam Howell. I know a lot of people be saying, have been saying he's someone who could sneak in that 53-man roster. So that's good to hear from Drew White, to hear from some of the uh, undrafted free agents. Drew White out of Notre Dame. He, he kind of looks like David Mayo a little bit when he plays, when I watched him play some of his highlights, some of his tape. But um, he's getting back there on, on Sam Howell, getting, getting, um, getting a sack there. Um, Scott Turner talking about Cole Turner. He said he's been great so far. Some rookie mistakes, obviously, but for the most part, he's playing fast and looking good doing it. That's one of my favorite picks of the draft. I love day three. I love getting Sam Howell. I love getting Cole Turner. Cole Turner, he reminds me of Jeremy Shockey. I really feel like he's going to be an impact player at the tight end position. Being next to Logan Thomas, being next to uh, John Bates, I think he's going to have really good hands out there and just have that catch radius, which Ron Rivera keeps talking about that catch radius. You know, having big hands, being six foot seven, 10 touchdowns in the red zone and that height that you just can't teach. And I feel like he has that dog in him and that swag in him, kind of like Jeremy Shockey. I hated Jeremy Shockey when we played him, but couldn't deny that he was a good player. Um, this is from Pete Haley. He says, Chase Young confirms that in his ACL surgery, they took a graft from the patella in his other knee. Like, Ron doesn't want to pin down an exact date for his return. So, yeah, we don't want to, like I said like earlier, like RG3 on for week one. We don't want to do that. Uh, we've had guys with injuries like Darius Geis and other guys where we've been like, oh, this guy's going to be back at this time. And then Bryce Love. And then they keep pushing it back and pushing it back. We don't want that to happen with Chase Young. 
Um, this is from JP Family Chase on his knee rehab. I want to be back as fast as I can, but won't put a timetable on it. I'm getting better fast. So there's good news from there. Um, this is from Logan Paulson. He says, the field just feels bigger when he's at the position. Talk about Carson Wentz. He hit a bomb to Jahan Dodson on a deep post. And that was a play that was not on the table for this offense last year. You know, Taylor Heineke had limited arm strength. Um, Taylor Heineke, he did what he could. He did what he could, but he just doesn't have the arm strength that Carson Wentz does. And um, Carson Wentz, man, they're looking to open up this offense, man. That's what they're looking to do. They want to throw the ball downfield. They want to stretch the field with Curtis Samuel, Jahan Dotson, Terry McLaurin. And Carson Wentz, I'm still lukewarm on Carson Wentz, but you see the tools, you see the talent, you see what he did. Not only in 2017, he had a good year in 2019, too. When they were, when the Eagles were five and six, and they beat Dallas on that cold night. It was like the NFC, basically the NFC East Championship game. Um, and Dak, you know, had the shoulder injury. And uh, Carson only had like Greg Ward and, and Dallas Goddard and, and um, Zach Ertz. And they didn't have many receivers. He went out there and found a way to win that game. So Carson was not too far from removed from being a good quarterback. I thought he was a good quarterback in 2019. 2020, he was awful. 2021, he was solid. 27 touchdowns, 7 picks. Doesn't tell the whole whole story, but Carson Wentz, he's the best quarterback we've had in a while, in a while for sure. Uh, this would be saying that Ron Rivera remains cautious about projecting a return to practice for Chase Young. Wouldn't be until closer to the season. Happy to have 99 back in the building for voluntary OTA sessions this week. Um, J.B. Finley also said Brian Robinson has gotten snaps with the first team as well. So I'm looking forward to see Brian Robinson from Alabama out there. Um, also, who else? Um, yeah, I think that, that's about it. That's about it for real for, with OTAs. Um, they probably won't be making, oh, um, Scott Turner said Jahan Dotson. He said the game doesn't look too big for Jahan Dotson. He doesn't say a lot, but he does his job well, just like Terry McLaurin with their personality as well. So, uh, Ron Rivera also said Montessori has a tremendous skill set and he learns to use it. He'll become more dynamic. So, um, good things to hear from OTAs. You don't want to get too hyped up. We know, we know we've gotten hyped up from people in uh, training camp and all that stuff. So you don't want to get too hyped up about it. But um, Jahan Dawson, he's really stood out. He stood out so far. I'm hearing nothing but good things about Jahan Dawson. I'm excited to see him play this year. I really am. And Carson Wentz, I'm lukewarm on him. But, you know, I, I, I want to see more. I want to see more. Jack Del Rio, he's been saying some crazy stuff on Twitter, too. When he said, bite these or something like that, he, he's a wild guy. And then he said, uh, congratulations to Watson until Jr. for being hired as the head coach when he got hired last year. So Jack Del Rio, he's just a wild guy. He's a wild guy. But you guys let me know what you guys think about OTAs. All right, you guys, Hilton Commanders. Peace.